what's up y'all in today's video y'all i came outside with e okay <laughs> i came outside with e yeah I am very excited to do this video. I am an overthinker and I have been going through depression and anxiety for quite some time now, to be more specific, 12, 13 years now, leaning more close to 13 years that I have been going through depression and anxiety, which led me to do this video right here. There are a lot of things that I want to cover in this video and I really just wanted to talk to y'all. Pardon the wind, I would pick a day where it's super windy. <laughs> to film this video however i'm gonna talk to y'all about how i stay calm that is the primary focus for this video i know that a lot of people are dealing with depression anxiety and mental health situations worldwide so trying to manage mental health is very dear to me i'm gonna share with y'all some things that i'm currently doing and some things that i hope to continue to do in the future that help me stay calm okay whether that's things i say things i do sometimes being quiet and not saying anything yoga listening into more podcasts, reading more books, self-educating myself as much as possible whenever I have the opportunity to do so, listening to lo-fi beats, getting more into scripture, getting more into the word. I'm not going to sit here and say that I know every Bible scripture because I don't. This is not a competition. I feel like in my walk with God, I have definitely learned a lot of things and I will continue to learn things. And of course, I will never know everything. I acknowledge that and I acknowledge that there are things that I'm going to learn and there are things that I might not fully understand. And there might also be some things that I may never understand in my personal life and just in general, really taking that time to journal and self reflect, getting that physical activity in whatever that may be. It might just be 10 minutes of cardio. It might just be, you know, five minutes of yoga. It it might be 30 minutes of doing weight training it might be whatever the situation may be just really getting that physical activity in is something that i have been more consistent and more adamant about doing recently in my life and i love to see it because already in the short amount of time that i have made great changes to better myself i can already see where it's making a great impact in my personal life and i love to see it i love personal growth i love evolving and i love trying to be a better version of myself so like i said y'all like like these are some of the things that I have been doing for quite some time and I'm looking down because if you didn't know I love to talk like oh my goodness I am definitely a conversationalist and sometimes when I'm talking and I'm trying to get my thoughts you know from in here and express them verbally out here get sidetracked and just start talking about xyz and I hadn't finished my sentence or my thoughts where I've stopped at you know the letter c or something like that so I really have to get myself guided notes to assist my thought process because y'all I love to talk but anywho being more consistent with everything I do all throughout my life establishing an effective realistic daily routine and nightly routine because seriously I have to have a routine because if I don't the next thing you know it's like oh I had all these things that I'm trying to juggle and do for the day and yes you know each day is never the same even if you do the exact same things every single day no two days are exactly alike down to the T. No. I try to make sure that I follow my routine and I write those things down that I need to get accomplished and not overloading and not putting too much in my day. And still, you know, being realistic with myself. And of course, if I accomplish everything on my to-do list for that day, then I might have, you know, a little bit of extra room or a little bit of extra time for, okay, let me add one or two extra things that I think I can get those things done, you know? Changing your environment if possible. And y'all just doing more things that I enjoy because I think that a lot of times in life we can get so caught up with I have to take the kids here I have to drop the kids off there or I have to go to work and I have to cook dinner and I have to cook breakfast and I have to do all these things and a lot of times we put ourselves on the back burner because you know it's just we're so used to the hustle and bustle of daily life that we don't take care of ourselves and we don't stop and think oh snap like I need to make sure I'm good romanticizing those things that you have to do on a daily basis like you may have to cook every day or you may have to work out every day or you know reading the scripture like everything that you do throughout your daily and nightly routine how can you periodically at least take the time to romanticize those things where my coffee lovers at you drink coffee on a daily basis that's just what you do like that's one of the things that you do on a daily basis maybe dress it up you know maybe change up your creamer change up your sugar put a little Splenda in there I don't know I'm not a coffee drinker but I'm just giving you you know a few suggestions for my fellow coffee lovers okay change your mug you might have been drinking out the same mug for a long time and you don't even think about it and you get bored with your coffee routine maybe change it up a little bit change your mug get you a reusable straw you feel me romanticize it jazz that thing up and stop playing with it <laughs> 
<laughs> when reading the scripture like change your environment these are some of the small things that you can do if possible that will really change your outlook and perspective i believe i really believe on a lot of things changing your environment maybe going from like a dark room to outdoors or maybe going from a dark room with no windows to a room with a lot of windows to the cooler room in the house as opposed to the hotter room or vice versa or going to a coffee shop to get your work done to meditate to read and to just really get in tune with yourself and get your mind right you feel me romanticize your life and even if you feel like you can't romanticize your life overall try romanticizing one or two things throughout your life and i'm telling you i'm telling you i guarantee you it'll make a difference like for real because i've tried it i know the way you journal maybe when you journal try video journaling as opposed to handwriting you know when you journal try to jazz up your workout like maybe you're bored with your workout you do the same workout every time you work out and you're bored with it so just really spruce it up and try 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 to romanticize it as best as you can so that way the daily things that you do you will be excited and you will look forward to doing those things try to jot down things that you have to look forward to like oh my goodness in a few weeks i'm taking a trip so if i can just keep pushing keep pushing keep pushing i'm going on this vacay set short-term goals like okay yeah i might not be going on a vacation for three four five months but what's something else i can look forward to oh my yoga class or meditating at the park going to my book club meeting this week give yourself things that you can really look forward to and i really feel like that'll help you like seriously welcome creativity in your life seriously welcome creativity in your life because i feel like we get so mundane and so routine we lose our creativity even for some of the most creative people in the world some of us lose our creative spark and i really don't like to see that because y'all like there are some very creative people in this world i welcome nature noises sometimes it's silent but it's not completely silent like i may hear the birds chirping from indoors or outdoors or i might be driving in the car and i don't listen to any music whatsoever so really appreciating the natural sounds and i feel like that's something that a lot of us don't do because we just have oh it's too quiet everybody's different but i'm just speaking on things that work for me and things that i like and one of those things being appreciating natural noise and appreciating when it's more calm and the slow days like every day doesn't have to be oh my goodness i gotta rip and run i gotta go here go there like to me really embracing those moments where i can truly get in tune with myself it makes your age good at the end of the day like that is one of my top priorities like if you don't make yourself a priority like that's a problem seriously the next key point i want to talk about is i feel like we overexert a lot of our energy it's definitely unnecessary at times and i would be more specific a lot of things i had previously reacted to that did not deserve my attention or my energy so of course we're all human it may have been something that got me a little upset a little agitated a little irritated right more recently i have been asking myself asia like does that deserve your reaction does that deserve your attention does that deserve your energy and when i stop and think about it half the time in certain situations my answer is no it doesn't deserve my attention it doesn't deserve my energy it doesn't deserve my reaction and so when you stop and think about those things, next time you get worked up or next time you get upset, stop and ask yourself like, whoa, pump the brakes, hold up. Self, like does this deserve my attention, my energy, my aura? Does it deserve my time? And I feel like a lot of times we react to certain things that literally do not deserve our attention, our focus. A lot of things don't even deserve our reaction. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, now we're worked up now we're upset now we're frustrated now hold up yes we are still human and we still have emotions and we still are allowed to feel are allowed to express absolutely but the way that i'm expressing myself is it in a positive way or a negative way the way that i am expressing myself is it going to hinder me or elevate me is it stressing me out so i feel like we have to ask ourselves a lot of those things especially on a daily basis because a lot of things are stressors and we may not realize that we are stressed but we are just really stepping back for a second and having a conversation with yourself and asking yourself like yo does this situation deserve my energy my attention my peace my time my effort and if the answer is no we're not gonna react to it like we're not because the enemy wants us to get worked up the enemy wants us to get stressed out especially over things that don't deserve our attention our time our energy our our space like you know what i'm saying so just ask yourself those things next time you find yourself getting worked up get agitated get stressed out getting mad getting upset 
and then you know you also don't want to do something that you're gonna regret or say something that you're gonna regret i am not in any way shape or form saying that oh i'm just oh my goodness all the time it's just my lacking that for the no you're looking at a person that has had panic attacks. You're looking at a person that has been very much so stressed out. You're looking at a person that has yelled till she can see the veins in her neck. I'm not gonna lie, I have definitely got worked up over certain things that have gotten me irritated, you know? Whether that's like me yelling at the top of my lungs or whatever that situation may be. So I'm not gonna sit here and act like, oh my goodness, I'm just always miss sitting pretty and calm and collective and no. Like I do feel like I pick and choose my battles. I do feel like I don't let everything upset me. I'm just trying to, you know, be more aware of that, be, be more self-aware of that. But, child, just know. <laughs> I feel you, okay? Because, like, this world be worlding. This life be life in. Like, <laughs> for real. Next thing I want to talk about, isolation. And if you've been going through depression, anxiety, or any life situation, you know, because I know there's so many different things going on, so many different situations and all that because like i said life be life it i feel like isolation is not always a bad thing because sometimes you need to redirect your focus and really get your mind together now obviously a lot of things are good if they're done in moderation too much isolation isn't good but on the flip side sometimes when you do isolate yourself i feel like it's good it's needed you know sometimes you need that isolation period to reflect sometimes you need that isolation period to get your mind right sometimes you need the isolation period to redirect your focus to adjust your focus so isolation i feel like is good when necessary to a certain extent you don't want to isolate yourself too much but i feel like isolation can be a good thing when done in moderation yeah just like a lot of things you know a lot of things are okay some things just straight up ain't okay. But a lot of things are okay if they're done in moderation. But some things, baby, they just straight up not good. Just think about that. A rage room. If you don't know what a rage room is, a rage room is basically a room or a space, whether that's outdoors, indoors, that is specifically designed for you to, I guess, let your rage out. It's a really good way to release your frustrations, your anger. I don't want to necessarily want to say in a positive way, but in a more positive way, you know, because you don't want to go out here in the world cutting up. So I feel like a rage room is good, a good outlet. There we go. Somewhat of a positive outlet for you to release your stress, anxieties, anger. It may have like different objects within a rage room that you can destroy, smash, and you're not hurting anybody. I feel like that's an option too because you can release what you're feeling. You can release your frustration and your anger without hurting somebody because we don't want to hurt nobody we don't want to do that therapy sessions because i haven't been in therapy in a long time since my teenage years so i really feel like i need to talk to a professional and that's okay therapy is not bad if you know that you need a professional and unbiased opinion to kind of guide you and lead you and help you i feel like god has placed people here to help you with your mental health so and i know everybody doesn't have health insurance one thing i will say is i don't know what state you reside or what country you reside but if you can try to look into mental health assistance options or health insurance assistance options as well because i don't want anybody to be out here struggling like i really don't i know we don't live in a perfect world but try to check into some assistance programs that can help you with mental health assistance and just everyday life assistance because once again life be life in like we all need help sometimes like and i'm not too proud to admit like sometimes baby i i need some help straight up serious i have had several panic attacks and it's not fun at all i wouldn't wish panic attacks on my worst enemy the first time i had a panic attack i didn't know what the heck was going on i thought i was gonna have to go to the er depending on the severity of a panic attack i'm pretty sure some people have went to the er but by the grace of god throughout my panic attacks that i've had i've never had to go to the er but for me when i have a panic attack now that i have experienced a panic attack multiple times i kind of know when a panic attack is coming on and i have a system that i do for myself to try to calm myself down but it's not fun at all having a panic attack is very draining exhausting and if you've never had a panic attack before which i hope you haven't had one and i hope you never have one but if you've had a panic attack it can be frightening especially for the first time each time you have a panic attack it might not be exactly the same so some of the things that i do to try to calm myself down in the midst of me having a panic attack i try to focus on my breathing <sighs> Thank <sighs> you.
I really try to focus on my breathing because that's number one for me. If I can't focus on my breathing and redirect my breathing patterns, like there's just no fixing it for me. So once I redirect and focus on breathing and establishing those calm breathing patterns before a panic attack, during a panic attack or after a panic attack, not only regarding a panic attack, but also everyday life you know i might feel like i'm getting a little stressed out or i might feel a little uneasy about a situation now of course i pray i do want an actual stress ball but this little squishy ball i love it and it definitely does calm me down take a minute and just close my eyes and then listen to meditation music squish this little squishy ball and it really does help then i can start to think about you know the other factors like oh what triggered this panic attack? What was going on before I had a panic attack? How has my day been going so far? How is my heart rate? Like there's a lot of things that I have to seriously sit back and analyze after I have a panic attack because y'all it's like I said, it's not fun. So try to jot down those thoughts, try to jot down those notes and those triggers all throughout your depression journey, anxiety journey. When do you feel the most anxious? When do you feel the most overworked? When do you feel the most stressed? Try to jot these things down because the more you know, the more you can help yourself. So that way when you have your doctor visits or your therapy visits, you'll have a record of this triggered the past five panic attacks I've had, or this is what I was doing when I got overworked or overwhelmed or frustrated or stressed. So just really trying to step back and tell yourself, okay, the more I know, the better. I feel like that will really help you because the more you know, about your panic attack episodes the better the more you know about your mental health triggers the more you know about your triggers and things that upset you and things that frustrate you or overwhelm you the better think about why did that make me mad like is this stemming from a childhood trauma is this stemming from something that happened two weeks ago is this stemming from something that was said to me 30 minutes ago is this upsetting me because i don't feel like i'm where i want to be in life why is this really upsetting me or getting me to that point where i have a panic attack why who, what, when, where, why? A lot of questions that I ask myself after I've had a panic attack, after I calm down. I ask myself those questions. I write down my thoughts, I journal. I keep record of all these questions. And then hopefully that will help you prevent some, at least some of the panic attacks that you would have had had you not assessed your panic attacks that you've had in the past. It'll help you moving forward. So I really think keeping record of a lot of things regarding your mental health will help you in the long run because you find out what your triggers are, what upsets you, what frustrates you. You find out how are you coping? Are you coping in a healthy way? Are you coping in a negative way? Are you being codependent? So I really feel like it helps in the long run to just try to keep record of as many things regarding your mental health and regarding your health overall as an individual as much as possible because the more you know about yourself, the better I feel like because it, it can help you. Like, why would you not want to help yourself? You have to want to help yourself as well. Yes, I understand we all need help sometimes from our loved ones. They can't drain themselves and leave nothing for themselves in the course of helping you. So you have to be aware of that as well. We have to look out for each other, but first and foremost, we have to look out for ourselves because if we don't look out for ourselves, we can't help anybody else. If I don't help myself elevate, how am I going to reach out and pull you up? If I'm declining, I'm gonna pull you down with me. We have to take accountability as well for ourselves. You have to want the best for yourself because somebody can want the best for you all day long. But if you don't want it for yourself, babes, like it's not gonna fly. It's just not. You have to truly want the best for yourself. Take initiative. You have to want to better yourself. And no accomplishment is more important than the other one. All accomplishments are of importance, seriously. And learn as much as you can about yourself. That'll help other people help you. If you first try to help yourself, that'll help other people help you. And in the course of you trying to help yourself, you have no idea. Like that will elevate other people, inspire other people. So come on, keep pushing, boo. Keep pushing. I know it's easier said than done, but come on now, we got this. As always, you're more than a conqueror. You got this, keep pushing. I say that every single video. Come on, I mean what I say. I mean it, come on now. Mental health is so important to me, y'all. Like I said, I've been dealing with this mental health journey of mine for years on years on years, but I am not defeated. You are not defeated. We are not defeated. We are more than conquerors. Come on now. Come on. Stop sleeping on yourself. Stop playing around.
God put you here for a purpose. Even if you don't know what your purpose is, keep running. Keep running. Now, I didn't say run away from what you need to face. I'm not talking about that. No, that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother video. <laughs> but keep running to God. Keep jumping over those hurdles. Keep going. Keep going. Sometimes it might feel like you have to crawl. Feel like you can't get up. Feel like somebody got their foot on your back and you're just crawling. But you just keep going. Keep going. Keep going. So whatever stage of life you are in, you might feel like you got to crawl right now and you can't get up. You might feel like you got to sit and you can't move. You might feel like you got to walk. Heck, you might be at the running stage. Whatever stage of life you are in right now, I promise you, you will get what God has for you. You just have to continue to endure. You have to continue to push through. And I'm currently going through that myself. So I'm not telling y'all anything that I'm not currently or already have faced as far as keep pushing. Grow through it. It hurts, but grow through it. It, it doesn't make sense, but grow through it. And really speaking those positive affirmations to yourself and actually believe in those positive affirmations in which you speak make a difference. Take time to reflect. Take time to figure out what's really going on with you. You got this. The reason why it's so hard for you, seriously, and I, I say this to myself too, Asia, the reason why it's so hard for you, baby girl, not because God doesn't love you. I do believe that why it's so difficult, especially at this current point in my life, is because God is trying to talk to me. God is trying to show me some things and there might be tests that I have failed and I have to keep getting retested and retested on different things and different stages throughout my life. And I haven't proven that I have passed the test. So as a result, I keep taking the same test over and over and over. It can be frustrating. It can be confusing, but you got this. Like I said, we got this. Okay. Keep pushing, keep the faith. Seriously, keep pushing and you're going to be all right. I really mean that. Hopefully something was said within this video to help you to benefit your life. And I speak life into you. I speak strength into you. I speak wisdom, knowledge, understanding, discernment, empowerment. I speak clarity within your life. And I pray that all of your current and future endeavors that are ordained by God will be blessed. I speak that in the name of Jesus, like wholeheartedly. I speak breaking generational curses and that's why it's so hard. But nobody ever said it would be easy. you have to break these generational curses so it's very difficult i know you don't understand i know it doesn't make sense i know it's chaotic confusing you might feel lonely you might be in a season of solitude and you feel like dang i feel like i've been in the season of solitude what one season of solitude heck i feel like 20 seasons of solitude With all of that being said thank y'all for watching this video i hope that something was said within this video to help you think about things from a different perspective and some ways that you can hopefully keep yourself calm and just redirect your focus because like all throughout life you just have to redirect your focus i hope that y'all gain you know some tea <laughs> as always you're more than a conqueror you got this keep pushing smash that like button light it up light it up light it up one time put it one time comment down below hit the red subscribe button with the white letters and that lovely notification bell so that we don't miss out any of my future posts on my channel and like i said we gonna be all right i'm getting ready to do some yoga i'm already outside with it y'all i am super duper 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 lit i've been doing yoga consistently for the past few weeks i'm still trying to get my form together and all that so don't come for me in the comment section you know <laughs> my fellow yoga peeps some of y'all may have been doing yoga for years on years on years some of y'all may have been doing yoga for a day two weeks everybody's journey is different however i do need to continue to work on my yoga form but the main focus is for me to just be as calm as possible find my rhythm and just vibe with it vibe with the bluetooth speaker on as well as the lovely outdoor noise if you will let's go ahead and get to this yoga let's get it Hi and welcome to this episode of Keep It Positive, sweetie. Today we are talking about something that I personally have been um, really dealing with um, a lot lately and it is navigating anxiety. 
And when I think about anxiety, I think about the scripture, Philippians 4, 6 through 7. And it says, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And um, in this season of my life, I have been dealing with a lot of anxiety. And um, I had to remind myself daily that I have everything I need. I lack nothing. And that's helped me so much.